right. We have fire. Oh yeah, good old coffee. All right guys, so today is Sunday and I decided to do a bow drill video for you, an updated one. Now what I have here below me, I went ahead and chopped it up, got the pieces I need all out of the same material. This is Chinese tallow, Chinese tallow tree. Down here we call it popcorn tree. Uh, there should be some pictures of the, uh, the berries and stuff and when they develop, they look like popcorn. This is an invasive species. It uh, grows everywhere down here in the south. This is what I've been using a lot for um, our bow drills. I love using cypress. Uh, when I can find cedar, I love using cedar. But this here has been my go-to down here in northwest Florida is the popcorn tree. Now what I've done, I've cut a baton off this knuckle here. And this is going to be our board and also our spindle. It's all going to come out of one piece. All right. Everything we're going to be using is coming out of one piece. I will trim this down to make a handhold for the spindle all out of one branch. So with this, you've got your core center of your piece of wood. You don't want to be using that material. When you baton this off, you want to quarter this off and get away from that core. That's a softer wood. Same with the spindle. You want to take off a quarter and trim out. All of the same stuff. If you're using that center core on this wood as your spindle or fireboard, uh, you get into that soft material and it plays hell trying to actually get a good fire going. So we'll go ahead and get this split. Set that down there. Yes, I've got uh, traffic in the background. Get some more coffee. It is early. So, but without fire, you can't have coffee. So I'm just going to put my blade up here, up near the core. Now usually I use an old hickory knife, uh, one of those old hickory butcher knives, and that's usually what I use for batoning. Unfortunately, it's in my gear, and my gear is currently put up. So this is going to be our board. We are going to split back the back side as well, just a little bit, just to give it some more flatness. Usually your board, half inch to three quarters of an inch is usually what I use. Notch that off. This should lay down flat enough for us to use it. So I'm going to shave this down. Do a little shaving on the back side just so it lays down flat. Okay, so for our spindle, we quarter it off again off our main piece. And usually, I go pinky to thumb. That's going to be our spindle. So, we're going to shave this end down into an actual spindle size. Get it squared up, nice rounded. And that is going to be what we'll be using to actually put pressure on this fireboard. So currently, I'm getting this spindle as straight as possible. We're going to thin it down some. Now with your spindle, I found out what works best is about the thickness of your thumb. Seems to work best as far as the blunt end. And then you make the end of your spindle a nice point at the end for your handhold. 
less friction, easier to travel with. Now again, that's about the size we're using for the bow drill. Now if you're using a hand drill, of course you want a longer straighter one, that we can go all the way down the friction of it. But for a bow drill, it's about the size you want. So I still gotta thin it out just a little bit, get some of the burrs off, just so that while I'm using the bow, I'm not really catching any friction up here. The smoother it is, the better it works. And how you trim this is up to you. Sometimes I just put my knife up against my knee and I drag it across. It usually seems to work pretty good on keeping everything straight, just like this. But occasionally I'll set it up and I'll cut into the wood. If I got a lot of high spots or some type of knot, it seems to work pretty well. Please don't ever do this. Don't ever put the wood on your leg and cut down. If you're deep in the woods and you miss and you get those major arteries, well, let's just say it won't be good. Now this is our handhold. Place it down, we're gonna put a notch right here in the center. And this will be for pressing down with our spindle while we're bow drilling. Now I've gotta get the end of the drill formed. Now you want this rounded edge and kind of flat on the end um you gotta be it, it takes some time to get used to you you want it as blunt of a surface on your fireboard as possible but you also need to make sure those edges are round and like i've discussed in this video up here uh while you're using a bow drill and if you ever take your drill off your fireboard and you notice it's charred on the outside, you need to make sure you remove that char because you've hardened your tip and you wind up drilling through your fireboard and not getting the friction that you want. So you just take your time, trim this down, get it flat yet slightly round. The most friction you have against that board, the better. I like that right there. All right. And you just eyeball it, see how it looks like it's moving. This in here will work. And again, about the size right there. So, we need to get a bow. Alright, so we got a branch here. This come off the same popcorn tree. Uh, you want it, stick it in the armpit. And if you can touch it, at the end of your finger. That's about as long as you want your bow. Now we have enough room to get your friction and everything. So I just took a Bowman, put over that branch. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this around. Pull that down. All right. Now we're going to take our spindle. I'm going to move my cable here. I'm going to set our fireboard down. And we've got to get a burnout of where we want our hole. So, get this locked in place. There we go. Grab our handhold. Get this in position. Alright, so we want that first burn in so we can see where our spindle is going to do it. And then we have to cut out our notch here. That way it's just barely into the actual hole that we're going to be drilling. So let's go ahead and get that done.
So, now that our notch is cut on the back side, I cut out some airflow, just, just an angle on the back side of this, just so that when we are building up our dust, we do have some airflow on the back side. Now, one of the things I did not cover is a place for your coal. Your fireboard is going to sit just like this, or all your dust will fall on it, collect, and hopefully create a coal. So, let's go and get started. All right, so I want to take the time to stop right fast and show you guys what's going on here. Now, as you can see, our groove is collecting dust. Nice light brown. Our catch is catching it. Okay, so with that, we'll continue. We'll set this back up. Make sure everything's nice and flat. So that is definitely the most important part anytime you take off your spindle and we replaced the spindle I made another one just a little bit longer you want to take off any charred material that's on the end of your spindle all right so you take your knife clean it up just like this because you've hardened your end and you don't want to uh, drill through your board and this is the spindle tip all right now I always keep an eye on the back of my spindle I like to keep that nice and pointed it just works so much better with it when you have that pointed and we also changed our bow one with a little bit more of an arch it just seems to work so much better today than usual all right so we'll get our self in position without busting my rear end move our other material and we'll get started again nice even pressure nice slow movement with the bow keep everything uniform right now you're just collecting a massive pile of dust all right that's all you want you don't want to go too fast and mash down too hard because if that dust changes from that light brown to a black you burned up your dust you want to keep this going just like this create the dust make a nice little coal size nugget and then we'll start applying pressure and speed to get that friction heat Excuse me, a little bit out of breath. Okay. All right. Now, one second, guys. Let me get my uh, my mic on. 
We'll go over this. Okay, testing one, two. Okay, so we have our coal. All right. Now, we've got our bird's nest material here. It's made out of cedar. I'm going to put this in here. Carefully drop your coal in. Now, you want to angle this up in the air. Heat rises when you blow through. Alright, we have fire. And we have fire material. There you go. So, it does take time. I've been out here for about 35 minutes. Today was a tough one. It's been a few months since I've done a bow drill. I was proficient in about 13 minutes, so it's been over 30 minutes on this one, plus I'm trying to film. Uh, bow drills are a great way of starting fire if you have no available means of creating fire. It really is. So anyway guys, I want to direct you to a video that is the one wood bow drill challenge. Everything must come from one piece of wood. Your material for your bird's nest, everything. If you guys can do it, film it, and uh, send it to me, and we'll air you here on the channel. Uh, currently, we've only had one other YouTuber that's been able to complete this. Um, that was Arkansas Living, and we did a video showing his uh, experience with the one wood challenge as far as the bow drill. I encourage you guys, get out there, try this stuff. I'm in the yard. It's Sunday morning. I'm out here in the yard. One thing you never do is don't lay your spindle down on the ground. It soak up moisture. Yeah, I'm out here in the yard practicing again. All right, guys, hopefully you guys get out there, start practicing these skills. Speak to you all later.